Okay, thanks for the introduction, uh, Larissa, and I appreciate the opportunity to contribute to the discussion here today. So I'm going to spend a few minutes um, talking about scenario planning at iCubia, which was accelerated as a, as a result of the pandemic, although obviously the topics we're going to cover here can be applied outside of crisis situations, of course. So as a brief introduction to the company, iCubia is a provider of services to the life sciences industry and providing services from clinical trial outsourcing through to drug commercialization and launch, and then onto the post-launch marketing and performance tracking and management. So um, with that context, let's move on to the, the next slide. So this first chart provides a summary of the fairly traditional way um, that the corporate finance processes at iCubia have historically been managed. Um, this starts with a vision and a strategic plan, typically over a three-year period, with associated longer-term financial projections. The company then runs an, runs an annual planning cycle, which combines both a top-down and bottoms-up build to, of the plan to help define targets and actions required to help achieve that plan, as well as the development of a capital allocation um, budget to ensure that the investments the company is making, whether through M&A, internal development, or other means of capital allocation, such as share buybacks, are driving earnings accretion in line with the longer term strategic plan. We then also run a monthly forecasting cycle that typically runs until the end of the current calendar year, uh, alongside a view of sales and revenue backlog generation to help inform longer term projections. Within this process, we have introduced some of the concepts relating to rolling forecasts that Nitu has just walked through, such as assessing periods that align with the business cycle and focusing on key drivers such as workforce, workforce capacity but we do still have some ways to go to fully implement a systematic rolling forecast approach. This forecasting approach also includes an assessment of risks and opportunities, which provides us with an opportunity for reaction and course correction as needed, both in terms of the current year plan and the longer term strategic plan. Through these processes, we are using a variety of finance, financial reporting and analysis tools. Um, I would say that we're certainly not bottom of the pack in terms of uh, leading edge finance applications, but also not sure that we would classify ourselves as uh, best in class. However, I, I think the key point is that the processes that outline in this finance operating model have not included a formalized process in relation to scenario planning, which would introduce more forward looking approaches to modeling on top of the existing forecast process. So this is where we have some opportunities for improvement in our finance model. And similar to the experiences that Nitu has just described, COVID-19 provided the catalyst for that, which leads us on to the next chart. So as I expect was the case for all of us, uh, in the early part of 2020, it became apparent that the spread of COVID-19 in China across, and across other parts of Asia was starting to have an impact on our business, particularly in the areas which we relied on face-to-face -face interaction for sales, and more importantly, access to patients and hospital sites to manage and run clinical trials on behalf of our clients. It was clear that the more traditional models of managing budgets and the forecasting cycle was not going to be sufficient here in the face of unprecedented uncertainty. So the corporate finance team was part of an executive team to help navigate the company's response, which involved the need to implement more formal scenario planning. The steps that I'm going to talk through here will include reference to the pandemic, but as mentioned earlier, these obviously can apply more broadly. Firstly, we needed, to define, we, needed to, we needed to define the key drivers and assess the, the appropriate time horizons for the different scenarios. This can include internal and external factors, and the time horizon will be specific to the type of business or industry that you're operating in. But in our example, we were looking at drivers such as hospital site accessibility and the pandemic trajectory with a focus on the short term over the next few quarters. Once those key drivers have been determined, you'll need to ensure you have a robust way to model and measure them, in which data and analysis will be critical. In our case, we were able to utilize internal AI-based predictive modeling capabilities within our business operations on areas such as the transition from on-site monitoring to virtual, or what is now often called decentralized trial monitoring, and how that shift then impacted areas such as work for workforce capacity needs and pricing, which of course have a financial impact. Being able to determine the relationships between the drivers is key as you then develop the scenarios in the next step. So as part of the scenario planning development, having clear, having, having clear and concise assumptions on the modeling is key, including operational actions to be taken in each scenario. And in our case, this was important to ensure that each of the business units across our company was clear on the approach and were aligned to the centrally managed assumptions 
essentially the fine assumptions that would be needed to be applied to their businesses to develop the financial modeling. It is also worth noting or I'm worth ensuring that the scenarios include some sensitivity analysis to help determine a range of financial impacts. And then finally, if there is a need to implement actions associated with each scenario as needed, you'll want to have the ability for ongoing performance measurement and a continual review of assessing the impact of new information or changes in market conditions. In our example, this included making adjustments to the length and trajectory of the pandemic, which was obviously panning out uh, negatively compared to our original assumptions, although that was offset partially by the capacity of our workforce to continue with sales and business development, development activity, which was an improvement versus the original modeling. So with that, let's turn to what we learn and future recommendations. So I think from a learnings perspective, what I would say firstly is that the pandemic has reinforced the reality that uncertainty is everywhere and we cannot assume the status quo, whichever industry we're operating in. Having the ability to consider and develop scenarios that take into account unexpected events, whether that be from new and disruptive competition into the marketplace, government or legislation changes that impact our operating models, or more extreme and one-off events such as the pandemic, these are all important skill sets for finance practitioners to be ready to support the business in acting on in today's fast-moving environment. In some ways, it can be considered an opportunity to accelerate the transformation in the way that the finance function operates. There's also a need to determine key drivers and assumptions for the modeling. If this is not clear, either to leadership or the business, there is a risk that the benefits of scenario planning are gonna be diluted due to the lack of being able to assess the interconnections between drivers and assumptions. In addition, all of this requires the support of strong technology capabilities to help provide real-time modeling to inform decision-making on courses of action. And so now that we have been through this process and are starting to formalize this within the finance operating model, some recommendations I would make uh, include the fact that scenario planning has to be more than using the rearview mirror as a guide to the future. This links closely to the point, to the point above around having the right supporting models and the supporting tools, I should say, to provide context on key assumptions for modeling. In addition, the ability to assess how different scenarios of the uh, different scenarios are, are impacting the resilience of our company. Um, so, for example, what options do we have to manage liquidity if scenario A or scenario B had happened, such as improving cash cash flow collection, the ability to access credit, assessment of loan terms, etc., which will will all help to drive strength in the balance sheet. We may find that it's the case that it is the case that we need to undertake some actions right now to mitigate risks in the future by undertaking this, this scenario modeling. And finally, I would say that the scenario planning will help position FP&A as a key partner in managing risk and creating shareholder value, which is something that I think we would all want to be part of within our respective organizations. 